Hey guys, Pastor Preston is my name. I'm so excited to come your way today. I serve as the Chief Servant of Perfect Love Believer Center and I'm so excited doing my job. It's a great privilege of, of God. It's a great privilege. I'm so privileged yeah, for God to choose and use us to do His will. There's nothing as fantastic as that. Okay, so I always don't take it for granted. Glory to God. Today I want to share something very beautiful that I think will be of great blessing to you and I'd like you to pay attention. There is this um, narration where it seemed like a couple of churches today are responding to the material needs of the brethren primarily right as if that's the purpose to which it was established but unfortunately it wasn't established for that purpose yeah and then but that's how he has gone and that narrative needs to be changed not because it is something we're trying to change but because that's not how he has always been from the beginning remember jesus also used the same term when he says from the beginning he has never always been like that when they were talking about the bill of divorce in their question to jesus glory to god somebody yeah and i want to tell you a simple story and i would like to think it like this yeah first the world was not created empty god did not create you dump you in this world without no provision if you read your bible correctly in genesis chapter number one you discover that god created everything that we needed and brought us last that's so interesting because he wanted us to manage everything that he created but we begin to live today like god created us in such a way where he brought us here to come and suffer he made everything we needed and they were all good you see that and then he brought us here no matter the challenge you're going through the financial hard times and all that it is important that you believe that god has provision for you and to trust him so you can receive as against living for materialism this is very deep if you read matthew chapter number six uh, right if you read from 24 down to 31 there were a whole lot of conversation about this yeah where i begin to explain the fact that the, the bed that flies in the sky they didn't labor but yet they eat it says how much more you that are superior to those creations right it's important that we begin to define things properly yeah the christianity is eternal in nature it is not earthly in nature for us the church must not be living to pursue material stuff we must be living to pursue eternal stuff look at what paul said he says uh, fight the good fight of faith first he called it a fight of faith it is a fight a good fight to be more prosperous and materially uh, accomplished this is fight the good fight of faith and notice what he says next he says lay hold on eternal life it is a lay hold on wealth it is a lay hold on money but it says lay hold on eternal life it is is important that we understand that God knows what we're going through and God is on top of the situation all you need to do is trust him for survival and then you use your life to pursue his will and pursue his cause establishing his will upon the earth it says that will be done on earth as it is in heaven now we carry heaven in us and we got the ability to manifest heaven upon the space of the earth that's why in Romans chapter number 8 you saw where the people says that the people People are with the manifestation of the sons of God because the sons of God carry heaven inside them. Jesus said, The kingdom of God is within you. So we carry heaven in us and we can manifest heaven upon the face of the earth and bring all of the creations to joy and to excitement because Satan has programmed this world to fail and we need to change things, we need to reorganize things. But that's not what we pursue, right? As our Christianity, glory to God, somebody, hallelujah. This is very important and I need to share it i'll read a couple of scriptures and they will just help you glory to god hallelujah philippians chapter number three look at this for many work or whom i have told you often and now tell you even weeping that they are the enemies of the cross of christ whose end is destruction right it says whose god is their belly and whose glory is in their shame who mind earthly things did you see that it says they mind earthly things what did he say i like to read that again it says for many walk of whom i have told you often and now tell you even weeping so paul was weeping telling them because it was so important it was so crucial and see what he says here he says that they are the enemies of the cross 
And then it begins to state their characters, the people who are enemies of the cross. It says, whose end is destruction? Whose God? It says, whose God is their belly? So when uh, your God is your belly, when your life is to pursue what you need to eat, what you need to survive in life, it says you are an enemy of the cross. And it says, whose glory is in their shape? Who mind earthly things? So you ought not to mind earthly things. Colossians chapter number 3 tells us to set our affections above where Christ is seated. Glory to God, somebody. It is important that you understand this. The church does not exist to meet material needs. The church exists to meet spiritual needs, to train people in Christ, to help people manifest Christ, to help people recognize, discover whom they are in Christ and manifest that in this world. Glory to God, somebody. I like to hear this. Perverse disputing of men of corrupt mind and destitute of the truth, supposing that gain is godliness from such, watch this, from such, glory to God, it says, from such we draw thyself. What this is, supposing that godliness is gain, material gain. It says, from such we draw thyself. Then it says, but godliness with contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into the world, and it is certain we, we can carry nothing up in having food and ramen let us be there with content some of my honest say, but i don't have food and ramen and then you call it for you believe god for it is gonna come glory to god somebody look at the next one matthew chapter number six from 31 to 33 glory to god therefore take no thought saying what shall we eat or what shall we drink it says therefore take no thought but unfortunately a lot of people are living for such purpose a lot of people are in such pursuit of what they will eat and what they will drink it says or whether shall we be clothed for after these things do the gentiles seek another translation says after these things that unbelievers are pursuing or pagans are pursuing glory to god it says for your heavenly father knoweth that ye have need of all these things did you see that it says your heavenly father knows that you have need of all these things and he says but seek ye first the kingdom of god and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you now watch this he says your heavenly father knows that you have need of all these material things to survive in earth but he tells you then he would have said oh then pray a lot for it or seek it and god will give it to you rather he says seek ye first the kingdom of god and his righteousness and, and all that things that you have need for god will provide so it is god's responsibility to provide your needs well that's not to say to sit at home and be idle and then say well god's going to provide Pastor President said it. Uh uh. It is, you know, God drops an idea for you. You get a job doing, you get something doing, drops an idea, and then when you play in, in, in line with that work, you make money. But you are not living for it. You are, your life is not in pursuit of materialism. Uh uh. Your life is in pursuit to establish the will of the Father upon this earth. Your life is to live the will of God. Glory to God. That is how we understand the workings of the love of the Father that is in operation in us when we allow God. God's spirit, you have to do the work of eternity through our life. Glory to God, somebody. Hallelujah. I have some more here. Matthew 6, 24. Very interesting scripture. It says, No man can serve two masters, for either he will aid the one and love the other, or else he will hold on to one and despise the other. Then it says, You cannot serve God in mammon. You can have a mix of the two of them. First Timothy chapter number 6. Verse 17, we're ready to 19. Very interesting passage. Charge them that are rich in this world. I like the way first john chapter number three verse number 17 put it he said those who have this world's goods glory to god so he called materialism this world's goods so do you want to just only have this world's goods and not have the kingdom of goods and not have the kingdom uh, a treasure think about that then it says charge them who are rich in this world that they be no eye minded not trust in uncertain riches so they should not trust in that riches then it says but in the living god so what do we trust in the living god glory to god who giveth us richly all things to enjoy that they do good uh, that they do good that they be rich in good work glory to god so the richer you are the richer you are in good works the richer you are in cash or money materialism the richer you are in good work the richer you spend for the kingdom the richer you respond to the poor that's something really fantastic remember in ephesians chapter number four verse number 29 28 to 29 it says he that stole let him steal no more let him work that he may have to give to the needy glory to 
got somebody. So we don't even work to make a living. We work to make a giving. That's so fantastic. Hallelujah. Then it says, be rich in good works, that they be rich in good good work, uh, ready to distribute, willing to communicate, laying up in store for themselves a good foundation against the things to come that they might lay hold on eternal life. Did you see that? It says that they might lay hold on eternal life. Not lay hold on their materialism, but lay hold on eternal life. That is very deep. Yeah, so don't miss God by pursuing materialism. That's being a pagan. That's what the Bible says in Matthew 6, 31. That's being a pagan. Yeah, you got to pursue the course. So when the church begin to exist, to be a blessing to materialism, primarily, then that church is a pagan association. That's the truth because it is not eternal course they are pursuing. I remember in the scripture reading Timothy, it says, withdraw from such kind of people. It says, withdraw from them because God came, right? Jesus came to establish an eternal realm of things and not just to restore a great word. That's why I want to say a lot of people today who are working so hard, like their whole life is dependent and working so hard, I feel sorry for them because they have not truly understand what it is to live in Christ. Hallelujah. Glory to God, somebody. That's not a help you say, just be lazy, not work. No, no, no. I've said that before. Paul said, he that will not work should not eat. But we are not existing for such purpose. We're not running to pursue material stuff. We're running to establish the will of God. So all that energy that you spend just to eat, to merit material stuff that you're going you're gonna to live in this earth, that's going to, uh, uh, you know, vanish with this earth or deal uh, with this earth, spend that energy for soul winning. Spend that energy to, to, to manifest the will of God. Spend that energy to grow your spirit, to lay hold on eternal life. Glory to God, somebody. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is very deep. And that's the message. God knows everything that you need. He made provision. Do you even know in Matthew 7, just the next chapter after Matthew 6, it says, if your father if you ask him for bread, sorry, he will not give you stone. If you ask him for fish, he will not give you something. He says, and if those people who are wicked in their construction will not do that, what about your father who is generous in giving? Glory to God. Who is so gracious? Who is so kind and nice? What about him? Right? Think about that. So when you suffer, you suffer because you don't trust God. You don't believe God. You do not make a request and have confidence that he can do it yeah that's why you suffer and then you begin to leave and pursue it like all your life is dependent on it listen to me as i close yeah god created all things for our use it is stupidity for you to begin to live your life for the things that were created for your use instead of to live for the one who created all things Think about that. And that's what the devil has succeeded to do because his purpose is to take you, your mind away from God and to take your mind on material things that will just give you temporal satisfaction and will, and will definitely vanish over a period of time. So don't fall victim for the devil's scheme. Rather, let the church and let all of us right, begin to bring people back to God, to know God, to love God, to discover God in us and to live for his will, for what his love stands for. Glory to God somebody. That's my message and I believe it brings you a lot of blessings. Share this with someone and so you can be a blessing to them. I love you. I'll see you in the next conversation. Amen.